Let's Enjoy get it out to uh, Robert Gibbs, who's in Chicago. He's uh, with uh, Team Obama uh, at the headquarters in Chicago, I believe. Uh, you have a, a, a smile on your face, sir. I, I, are you viewing this night as, as going well? Look, uh, Dan, so far so good. That's what I would say. Uh, I think every path that we had to 270 electoral votes uh, is still wide open for us. So, uh, look, it's early. I, I, we're going to be here for a while, but if you look at where the early vote not only came in in terms of margin, but where it came from in a lot of key states like Ohio and Florida, uh, we feel pretty good about where we are. We felt actually, to be honest with you, pretty good for the last several days. I think the race has been very, very stable with the president leading and uh, uh, so far so good. Robert, how much uh, do you think that the, the issue of the hurricane and the president's response to that has to do with the success that he's having in so many of these states. We obviously don't have a popular vote yet, but in terms of the states that he's been yeah. able to pick up yet. I think that, as you've seen in a number of polls, people viewed the president's response to the hurricane appropriately as very positive. But I gotta tell you, uh, we have not seen in any of our state polling a change in our state numbers uh, based at all on the hurricane. I, I think the notion that the hurricane significantly altered it significantly altered the coast of the eastern seaboard it did not significantly alter in any way the trajectory or the contours of this race robert um talk to me a little bit about the uh the the house races why weren't democrats able to pick up more seats why what what went wrong there we had we had the talk about the ryan budget we have uh, uh congress incredibly yeah. unpopular why weren't why weren't democrats able to capitalize more on that well, look, I think we're going to look, I'm sitting in Chicago and I know we're going to pick up some seats uh, here in Illinois. Uh, a wonderful uh, patriot in Tammy Baldwin, uh, um, uh, 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 not Tammy Baldwin, uh, <laughs> what? Tammy, Tammy Duckworth. Duckworth. I'm sorry, <laughs> I've got I've got Senate on the brain and uh, but a wonderful veteran in Tammy Duckworth who's going to pick up a seat uh, here. And look, I, I will say this, I, you know, one of the things we notice about our House seats, particularly after we do reapportionment, is a lot of these seats get either more Democratic or more Republican. There are a whole lot more safe seats that are, quite frankly, no longer in, in play. And we've had wave elections in 06 and 08 for Democrats and 2010 for Republicans that, quite frankly, uh, marginal seats uh, are now no longer marginal. So I, I think if you look, though, at uh, the Senate races and some of those swing states where they're having races, some of the other states, you've seen a lot of healthy Democratic uh, wins and I think we're we're buoyed by that. Robert, let's just uh, let's just stipulate for the moment that your guy wins tonight, wins re-election. He's then most likely. Don't jinx gonna, it. Don't uh, don't I, jinx me, man. <laughs> don't jinx me. I, I'm gonna <laughs> I feel jinx good, you. but I'm with you. Okay. I'll play hypothetical. So let's just play hypothetical. I'll play hypothetical. Okay. So sure. he's if he sure. wins, he's up against what looks yes. to be most likely a divided Congress yet again. And this is a country sure. with big, big problems. Let's just start with problem number one: the yes. fiscal cliffs on January one. Uh, right. If he's reelected, he will be reelected with a smaller margin uh, than his initial election, most likely. What kind of mandate will he have? And what will the atmosphere, what will the opportunities be like for progress of any yeah. sort in the atmosphere in Washington that we expect it to be? Yeah. Well, I'll say this, Dan. I think he will have a significant mandate, uh, particularly on the notion of a sensible plan to get our fiscal house in order. And what I mean by that is, you know, months ago, even Democrats thought, is the president going to actually run a campaign where one of the prominent messages is raising taxes on those that make above two hundred fifty thousand dollars raising taxes on the wealthy to bring to do something to bring our budget in, into balance and again i don't mean doing it all by raising taxes nobody's suggesting that but people thought that's a crazy message to run a national campaign on we have had that argument virtually every day of this race for two years and the president, if he wins, will have survived the notion of suggesting we raise taxes on the very wealthy. I think that gives him a strong mandate to say to Republicans, you know what, we have to do several things to get our fiscal house in order. We have to deal with spending, but we also have to deal with revenue. And I think if you're a Republican and you don't understand that if the president wins based on that message, 
that that isn't a signal that the American people are ready for compromise that includes both spending and revenue, then you're just not paying attention to the outcome of the election. <laughs> Although we did hear Speaker Boehner just a day ago saying absolutely no way, no how will we see any tax increases on anyone making at least a million dollars. So already the marker being set down before the votes even cast. Why do you think, I think the, the president called it popping the boil if he wins this election on, uh, on, on Washington, popping that, I yeah. guess it's kind blister. of gross idea, but blister, boil, whatever. Um, definitely but not the most definitely flattering Definitely not the flattering, yeah. but, but honestly, if you have the, the Speaker of the House right now saying, no way, no how, we had Tim Phillips on from Americans for Prosperity saying they're gonna be lobbying their members of Congress to say no way, no how to tax increases. What can the president actually do? Well, uh, well, there's a lot of things that the president has uh, leverage on, quite frankly, in coming up uh, through this battle. Uh, look, I don't want to get ahead of the White House on the legislative battle on this, but understand that uh, uh, I think what Speaker Boehner was doing was trying to set, lay down a marker, not for where he thought the negotiations or the compromise might be, but he laid down a marker for uh, the very, very, very hard right wing of his Republican House caucus. Uh, in trying to tell them, you know, we're going to be tough, we're going to be strong. But look, you, again, you cannot look at the results of this race if the president wins and say that we've not had a significant debate every single day. John Boehner is out there saying this president wants to raise taxes on rich people. And if this president gets elected saying we ought to raise taxes on the wealthy in this economy, and it's, you know, that survives a national referendum, if you will. It is hard to imagine how Speaker Boehner can look at that result and say, see, I told you so, we shouldn't do it. I also will say this, I, you know, I, I was in the White House for a little more than two years. Um, Republicans at every single opportunity simply said no whenever the president proposed something, even if it was something they previously supported. I think what the president was talking about in terms of breaking that fever, I'll use fever as a, a better sort of metaphor here, <laughs> breaking that partisan fever is this understanding that we cannot continue to govern this country where one side simply says no to everything that somebody else proposes. It is time to get a big table, it is time to get the seats around that big table, and it is time to begin to discuss all of the issues that because Republicans have simply said no, no, no on. We've kicked the can down the road, whether it's fiscal responsibility, whether it's immigration reform, whether it's energy, uh, education reform, a whole host of issues that Republicans have simply decided not to participate in the governing of this country. That changes at the end of tonight. Robert Gibbs, thank you very much. We really appreciate it.